The life story of Matthew Saad Muhammad is compelling and inspiring. Abandoned on the street as a child, he turned his life around to become one of the greatest light heavyweight champions of all time. Matthew Saad Muhammad was born Maxwell Antonio Loach on June 16, 1954 in Philadelphia. When he was an infant, his mother died and he and his elder brother were taken in by an aunt. However, the aunt struggled to cope and the elder brother was told to go and lose five-year-old Maxwell. The elder brother took Maxwell to Philadelphia's Benjamin Franklin Parkway and ran off, leaving him on the side of a busy six-lane stretch of road. Maxwell was found several hours later by police. He was frightened and sleeping on the steps of a church. The Catholic social services in the form of a sister Bernadette were called and took him to an orphanage. Nobody reported Maxwell missing, and because he did not know his own name, the nuns at the orphanage named him Matthew after the saint, and Franklin after the parkway where he was found. My um, memory of Matthew goes back when he was uh, found on the parkway in Philadelphia and came under the care of Catholic Social Services. He was placed in a foster home. His name was given to him because he couldn't at that point tell us who he was. So his name, Matthew, was given to him and the name Franklin was given to him because he was found on, the, uh, on Franklin Boulevard at that time. Matthew lived in foster care before he was adopted by John and Bertha Santos when he was seven years old. In his teenage years, Matthew's commute to school included daily beatings from a street gang. Unable to beat them, Matthew joined them, and by the age of 17, he had been arrested three times. Matthew was a quiet child who spoke with his fists on the streets. John Santos could not protect him from street gangs. After being involved in the uh, gang one, I liked it so well. Of course, I was a leader, became one of the leaders. After spending time in a reform school for carrying a large knife, Matthew knew that he had to change his lifestyle. So he left the street gang and began to channel his aggression by training at Nick Belfury's Juniper Boxing Gym in South Philadelphia. Matthew Franklin knows another part of Philadelphia well. Three times arrested for gang activities at age 17, he was literally in prison in this forbidding structure, the House of Correction. Then one day, hard times enough, he sat down with his mind and soul, determined to find another way. You know, I just stopped and I started thinking. I said, I cannot continue this type of thing. I want to try to get myself together. I want to be someone. And I start training in my cell. I made a bag up out of pants and stuffed other clothes inside there. I uh, made towels up, wrapping my hands up, and I used to punch the walls. I came out. Then I went to a gym. A gym is called the uh, Juniper Gym. And I came across a man by the name of Nick Belfury. At times, uh, he wouldn't listen, a little tick-headed. But I knew he had something all the while, because he was always a, a good puncher. And he took a good punch. Matthew competed in 29 amateur fights and won the Trenton Golden Gloves in 1973 before turning professional shortly after in 1974. Because Matthew changed his last name from Franklin to Saad Muhammad five years into his professional career, we will now refer to him as Muhammad to avoid confusion. Matthew Franklin becomes a professional boxer. He converts, converts to Islam, changes his name to Matthew Saad Muhammad. Muhammad's early career on paper appeared to be nothing special. After 20 fights, he had 15 wins, three losses, and two draws. In his second televised fight in 1977, Muhammad, in front of his hometown crowd, took on unbeaten contender Marvin Johnson for the NABF title. After a cagey opening round, the fight turned into a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Oh, good exchange. And Franklin counters. Good right by Matt Franklin at the chin of Marvin Johnson. Oh, good left hook by Johnson. 
Another good left box. A right hand by Muhammad knocked out Johnson's mouthpiece, and the bell appeared to save Johnson at the end of the fourth round. Left and right, the Franklin hits Marvin oh. Johnson. As Johnson oh, 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 he got two right. Johnson trying to hang on. He allowed it. Five seconds to go. That's it. And both fighters can't hit it after the bell. And listen to this crowd. Took a good pop there. Oh, oh. two good pops. Hey, Marvin Johnson took one and gave one. Boom. Each fighter showed it, go. Franklin scoring with White, but then Marvin Johnson comes back again. In the 11th round, Muhammad had Johnson badly hurt and looking like he might go down when the referee mistakenly thought that the bell had rung and broke them up. The delay gave Johnson a lucky break, and he made it out of the round. Johnson took three, four, five good pops from Matt Franklin. And rolling. In heavy trouble. Matt Franklin has Marvin Johnson in deep trouble. Ten seconds to go in the round. The three Ozzy Sandler thought he had heard the bell. Hold on, hold on. Coming into the 12th and final round, the commentators felt that whoever won the round would be declared the winner. However, Muhammad made sure that the judges would not be needed. That was the same oh, for Matt Franklin. Johnson in deep trouble. He's hanging on. Matt Franklin has Marvin Johnson in trouble, his right, oh! His right eye is closed, I think he might be out on it. Yes, he's out! Matt Franklin! I think Matt Franklin has just knocked him out! And this place is going wild! What a finish! Unbelievable! Following his victory over Johnson, Muhammad quickly established a reputation for mounting comebacks after being seriously hurt, and this earned him the nickname Miracle Matthew. A glorious example of Muhammad's tremendous recuperative powers came in this 1978 fight against Richie Cates. In the last 10 seconds of the fourth round, Cates hit Muhammad with a hard right hand that sent him face first onto the canvas. It's Cates is reaching over Franklin's arms right now. Somehow, Muhammad beat the count, and the referee sent him back to his corner on rubbery legs. Franklin is down from the right hand, and he's bleeding from the nose. He's up, he's staggering. There's only three or four seconds to go. Saved by the bell! He was saved by the bell! Muhammad came out in the fifth round as though nothing had happened. And this time, it was Cates who was knocked down and saved by the bell. Oh! Cates is down the right hand corner. There's only 10 seconds left in the round. 10 seconds left. Cates is getting up. Both, that's it. Both fighters saved. The, bell. the round is over. Nobody hears the bell, the round is over. Two rounds in succession and both fighters saved by the bell. After scoring a knockdown in the first minute of the sixth round, Muhammad finished Cates off with a thunderous right hand. Franklin trying to measure Cates now. Oh, he, he measured right him. Oh my goodness, did he measure That's him. it, that's the it. Is over. Franklin Three fights after beating Cates, Muhammad met talented contender Yaki Lopez. Muhammad controlled the first two rounds with his jab before almost knocking Lopez down in the third round. Beaten to the jab there. I mean, Lopez will pick up on something like that. 
Got under Lopez then. I think that he might have been a solid right shot. I think stuck. he might have hit him with that right hand coming down. It's hard to see if he's. Oh, there it is. He got hit with a right hand to ask him doing funny things standing up. He should have gone down there, Huey. Wow. I thought he pulled a, a groin muscle, Jack. He was hurt. Lopez had a reputation of being at his most dangerous after being hurt, and this proved to be true as he became more aggressive. Huey, I have uh, Jimmy DePiano here who has, there's a good right hand back answering over the top by Lopez. As they say, he's a fighter who gets more dangerous when he's hurt. Left shoulder up. Oh, walked into a hook that time. Good left up there. Oh, Matt Franklin. Oh, oh good left hook and right hand. Right. Keeping Lopez bottled up and not able to do anything. Blocking me. There are two good hooks going to the body. Lopez took a chance throwing that overhand right. In a brutal eighth round, Muhammad opened up a cut over Lopez's left eye, but was then shook up by a straight right hand that forced him to cover up. Boy, Jack, he is whipping in that right hand. Oh, he yeah. just took a right hand. Oh, did he take a good shot from Yaki Lopez? Ah. Matt Franklin is in bad shape against the ropes. And if Yaki Lopez doesn't economize, he's going to be in bad shape. Franklin is rolling off the rope. In a moment of bravado, Muhammad let Lopez punch himself out and smiled at him before firing back with a barrage of punches that put Lopez in trouble. We Look at him laugh! Yaki Lopez is in trouble if he has. All around for Matt Franklin as Yaki Lopez hit him with everything except the Philly stat rack. And back comes Matt Franklin. He's got Yaki Lopez in heavy trouble right in front of his back. You have to remember, you, you, you don't win a round in 20 seconds either, and Lopez comes back again. After an exchange of punches in the ninth round, Lopez's right eye began to swell up and became the focus of Muhammad's attacks. Rocky Lopez got his right eye. He's right eye. Oh, oh, he's he's in serious trouble with the right eye. Is in a bad way, Jack, with that eye almost completely closed, and Franklin is going it with, is. with hook and jab. Wow, Jack, it is completely closed. Lopez cannot see with his right eye. The only way he can see that left hand of Matt Franklin is to stay outside of it and see it with his good eye. Franklin just came underneath with a good hook, and as you see his corner telling him to go to the right. Matt Franklin wants to end it right now. Oh, snapping right end goes left. Not much vision left for Yaki Lopez. Unorthodox as it is, Huey. I think he just got uh, up right. I thought I purposely closed. Well, this round he'll tell. In the 11th round, a sustained attack from Muhammad worsened the cut over Lopez's left eye. And with his right eye now swollen shut, concerned referee Frank Cappuccino stopped the fight. Actually, just trying to get outside the left hand. He's trying to move to his right. He knows what he's doing. Now it looks like Capsino, Gregory Capsino, stops it. The fight has been stopped after the bell, and Matthew Franklin has indeed retained his North American Boxing Federation Light Heavyweight Championship. The win against Lopez earned Muhammad a shot at a world title against his old nemesis, Marvin Johnson. Since his defeat to Muhammad two years earlier, Johnson had won seven out of eight fights and upset Monty Parlov to win the WBC title. And now, the referee stops the fight! The referee has stopped oh. the fight and we've got a new light heavyweight champion of the world! Marvin Johnson, 24 years old, has dethroned Monty Parlov! Winning this championship uh, means more to me than anything. Say, hey, I was often and there ain't too many orphans to really make it in, uh, in this life, you know. They think that hey, once you become an orphan, you're through. And I want to really show them that I can be one out of a 
thousand or one thousand men that can really be of some good product. And this is the second meeting between Matthew Franklin and Marvin Johnson. They fought in Philadelphia previously, and it's considered one of the most savage fights in Philly boxing history. The first six rounds were fought at a ferocious pace, with both men dishing out and receiving an extraordinary amount of punishment. Good left hand by Johnson. Hard right to the body, hard right to the face of Johnson. Hard left hand by Johnson. Late. Whereas Franklin showed remarkable abilities to come back. And Franklin just tagged Johnson with a hard right hand. It's Franklin beginning to assume command. Hard right hand to the jaw of Johnson. The champion. Oh, a hard right hand by Franklin. See the left hand to the head. Uppercut. At the end of the seventh round, Muhammad stunned Johnson with an overhand right and followed it up with a vicious combination that almost put him down. After being saved by the bell, Johnson staggered back to his corner and slumped into his stool. Johnson bravely battled back while still on shaky legs in the eighth round and landed several left hooks that bloodied Muhammad's nose and caused blood from cuts above both of his eyes to pour down his face. Despite the blood limiting his vision, Muhammad relentlessly backed Johnson up and unleashed a flurry of punches that sent him to the canvas midway through the round. Throwing everything in his body. Hard right hand to the face of the champion. Another right hand to the face of Johnson. Johnson's in trouble on the rope. And down he goes in his corner. Johnson is down from an accumulation of at least a hundred blows. As Matthew Franklin, blood all over his face. Marvin Johnson, shaken, wobbling. The fight is over. The fight is over in the eighth round. But I'm glad I am the champion because uh, I started off doing a lot of wrongness and uh, I'm just glad I'm the champion of the world. In Muhammad's first title defense, he took on former champion John Conte. Muhammad finished strong and the two knockdowns that he scored in the 14th round proved to be the deciding factor on the judges' scorecards. Matthew Saad Muhammad 146, John Conte 142, the winner! And still, World Boxing Council light heavyweight champion, Matthew Saad Mohammed. After the fight, the WBC ordered an immediate rematch after discovering that one of Mohammed's corner men had used an illegal substance to stop a severe cut from bleeding. In the rematch, seven months later, Mohammed dominated Conte from the opening bell and knocked him down five times in the fourth round to score a convincing stoppage win. That's the fifth knockdown. Now, that's it. That's it. Over in the fourth round, five knockdowns. The winner, and still the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world. In Muhammad's third title defense, he beat Luis Pergo, which set up the rematch everyone wanted to see against Yaki Lopez. Lopez uh, not only is in uh, super condition, but had no problem making the weight. We watched him work this week, and uh, he looked super sharp and feels that uh, he's in the best shape of his career. In a fight that was named the Ring Magazine's Fight of the Year, Lopez built up an early lead in the scorecards by boxing behind a sharp jab and using his superior hand speed to land the more cleaner punches. Takes place August 2nd on Pulse Circuit. You'll see it later in the month here on the Sportsman. Have you noticed that Jackie has completely abandoned this pre-fight plan? No more jabbing and moving. He's, tight. he's taking the fight to, to Muhammad. Muhammad trying to laugh him up, but yeah. meanwhile is taking punishment. The fight is fighting one round slug and the next round moving. Back to 
was stand there and take the punishment. He did it again in round five, but he's on the attack now. In an eighth round that is considered one of the best rounds in boxing history, Muhammad opened up a bad cut over Lopez's right eye, but was then badly hurt and somehow stayed on his feet after being hit with 20 consecutive punches. After the punishing, action-packed eighth round, Muhammad gradually turned the tide of the fight in his favor and got his second wind while Lopez faded. In the 14th round, Muhammad finally broke Lopez's will and knocked him down four times to retain his title in an unforgettable fight. Right hand down goes Lopez. A right hand followed by a left hook. Tim, you know, seeing Lopez fall like that, that's better. Down he goes again. Down again. He's in trouble and Muhammad just measuring him now. The champion would appear to have retained his title. Lopez is done. Uh, his adrenaline is up now, Tim. He saw him fall down. That's like five minutes rest. Good right that's hand. It. That's it. That's it. That's it. The referee it. has said it is all over. And Matthew Saad Muhammad with a 14th round knockout of challenger Yaki Lopez has retained the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship. Muhammad went on to defend his title four more times, defeating Lottie Mawali, Fonzel Johnson, Murray Sutherland, and Jerry Martin, all by knockout. Muhammad's title reign ended at the hands of Dwight Braxton in 1981 when he was stopped in the 10th round. They're going in, they're trying to stop the fight. That's it. Arthur McCarney stops it. The corner went in to try to protect Matthew Saad Muhammad. From 1977 to 1981, Muhammad was undefeated in 18 consecutive fights. It was this glorious streak filled with savage fights and dramatic comebacks that made him a popular figure amongst boxing fans and one of the most exciting fighters ever. Yes, uh, a man, 25 years old, abandoned at the age of five. We've gotten to know him and we love this guy. Matthew Saad Muhammad from Philadelphia. After winning a comeback fight against Peter McIntyre, 
Muhammad lost a one-sided rematch against Dwight Braxton and looked like he was going to retire. I don't know, I think I may uh, retire uh, after this one. However, Muhammad continued to fight on for another 11 years but never reached the same levels again and retired in 1992 after losing 11 of his final 19 fights. Oh, and Govan is down. That's it, it's over. Saad Muhammad. Because he fought for many years well out of his prime, Muhammad finished with a misleading record of 39 wins, 16 defeats, and 3 draws. Life after boxing proved tougher than anything Muhammad faced in the ring, and he was found living in a homeless shelter in 2010 after losing most of his money through bad investments. But like so many of his fights, he made a comeback, worked as a roofer, and became a spokesman for a homeless campaign. That short to help me, it gave me a sense of uh... It gave me a sense of being something, something, you know, like, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, I'm here. And I wanted just to show everybody that, you know, you get knocked down, man, you get back up. That's if you want to. You got to have the encouragement. You got to have the willpower to get back up. A lot of times I've been there before. Yeah. I said, I'm not going to let myself go like this before. I'm not going to let myself get like this. And I got back up. I got myself together. I cleaned my, my act up. You know, I, I would just like to try to help people. When I help people, I help myself. It gives me a sense of uh, to want to do things for people. I want to get behind this program that the uh, HRD is having uh, for the homeless shelter, uh, knock it out, the homeless shelter, and that is the most important thing we can do right now. Sadly, in 2012, Muhammad was diagnosed with ALS and passed away in 2014 at age 59. He will always be remembered as one of life's true warriors, both in and out of the ring. Rest in peace, champ.